So continuing in this part where we left off, and of course we're at this measure here, measure 12, and I'm suggesting to keep the thumb tucked underneath so that it lands right here. Okay, and so that's great. So that means you continue playing with 5 and 4 right around this area. And then I'm going to go into that next measure and you can just about see the left hand. Sorry, what, what am I saying left hand? You can just about see the right hand's staff uh, at the bottom. So there I'm putting this in, which of course means this. Right, that little position adjustment right there on the downbeat. Uh, actually, this is wrong. That's what I want, so that the third finger is on A sharp. Uh, so then you go D. On that note, five, that's the adjustment you make. You bring the second finger over and the thumb over onto G sharp. Right, so that's another stopping point to just kind of check to make sure of things. Now here, there are so many good good ideas with fingerings. Like for instance, I actually would recommend this fingering. So look. Right, if you put the five on that long uh, half note here, sure, you can do it and then you have to bring the thumb over and I guess put four there or maybe five. But what if we just went right away for three? And that way you're like, okay, maybe slight adjustment there in, in that last measure you see on the page. But yeah, I, I would definitely do that because it just eliminates position adjustments that you have to go through otherwise. So here, th third on A sharp at first, then adjust to second on A sharp now and uh, thumb on G and so as we get into that green highlight measure boom third finger on E second on C sharp and then right there you would bring over the third finger like this which also puts the fourth finger like this so kind of squeezing the top part of the hand a little bit I don't think that th uh, second is actually necessary. I might eat my words later, but for right now it just doesn't seem to make sense. So just three, four, three, four, three, four, and then finally on the next page we'll get to the return of the main introduction material. Okay, main introduction material, that's an interesting way of putting it. Left hand, let's see about the left hand. All right, so starting on that A, and we kind of have this same as before, all the stuff I covered in the previous part. You spread it out like this, so obviously. Um, definitely put the third finger or even fourth finger you know, whatever, whatever fingering you use I think it's a good idea to put finger four here actually right before that green uh, indigo highlight and that way you're like okay you're already in, in position for what's coming up so four, five three here uh, and so at that A, uh, maybe we'll put a little preparation symbol like this. You get to the A, right, and right on, on A, that. The second finger has to point like this, and then, ah, but not like 
this, like this. So this is where I sometimes grab a little reminder of this sort. See that little, uh, no, that's actually the wrong part, sorry. Let's color it differently. Let's make it uh, red. Okay, so let's say here, what I'm trying to do is prepare that A sharp, right? So first in the left hand, that little square C sharp, and then that position. See how my fifth finger is on A sharp? That really sets us up for the next measure. And we go on. And this is where you just spread your hand as far as you can. Now, since the left hand's thumb is always playing the black keys or the white keys or the black keys, you're kind of better off doing that as opposed to, you know, like zigzagging in and out of the keyboard. Just keep it inside. So we'll use a reminder for that. Where is that reminder? Here it is, right? So just stick it in and you'll see that the thumb and the fifth finger, they're kind of at this strange angle while the long fingers are more aligned with the keys. Okay, so boom. It's probably not going to be possible for a lot of hands to spread all of these four notes. And even if you can, it's probably going to be very tense. So A sharp by itself and the thumb just reaches as far as it can towards the C sharp. So A sharp like this, not like this, like this. And then the, the thumb kind of just spread over. But you can see my second finger, it's not even close to G sharp. I'm just letting it hang loosely. And then as I go to E, that's when I reposition. Yeah, because then it's easy to adjust my position so that the second is on G sharp, first is on C sharp, boom. But on that C sharp at the top, this happens because, of course, we have to play the next chord. Of course, I'm calling them chords, but they are arpeggiations. Uh, however, These are chords which are arpeggiated. So, so second note, yeah, and then fourth note, adjust, click out as far as you can, right? So, this thumb might not even reach the E, depends on the size of your hand, but then as soon as you get to here, make sure that you've got all three notes covered. Right? And the angle of your hand will vary. And as you get to that E, make sure you've got these. In fact, I'm going to use my bracket to specify these notes. Right? So here. And now. Uh, here. So maybe I'll even connect like this. So it's obvious what, at what point I'm trying to position those specific notes. Okay, so inside the keys, second note with that rectangle, boom, that's what I'm doing. But then here, boom, see that? Reaching over of the second finger from G sharp to A sharp. A little tricky, but try it out. Then we're reaching with the uh, first finger, but it's here on that F sharp, right here, where we prepare the three notes uh, at the end of the measure. And then same thing, boom. Second thing, finger moves from A sharp to C sharp, right? So now I'm ready to go into this next measure. Boom. First reaches out. And then the 
as soon as I get here, uh, it moves. Okay. And so, of course, you can see how this pattern just continues, continues. So that idea of uh, preparing one set of notes, or at least the bottom note and the, the second note in the beginning, and as you play the second note, you readjust. And on the fourth note, spread out the bottom three, if you can, at least the bottom two. Let's say it's very hard for your second finger to reach that A sharp right after that yellow highlight. Okay, fine, just keep it here, relaxed, but then boom, right on the yellow highlight, snap into place. And then last note of that yellow highlight measure, boom. Maybe you cannot do that second finger, okay, relax. Make sure the, the bottom one is on E. Look how far inside the key I'm, I'm actually playing that uh, fifth finger. That's okay. So E and then A sharp there, ready with the third. Okay, so downbeat. I'm about to play A sharp. Boom. Same thing here. Make sure to prepare F sharp. Look, even for my relatively large hand, I cannot possibly uh, do that preparation of five and three, right? So right here, it's really, really impossible. So I'm just saying, hey, do this. Just one note at G sharp. Right, make sure you're ready. And now, I would say, play this F sharp as a staccato note. There is no reason to, I'll put it like a <laughs> purple circle on it. There you go. The pedal will take care of things. Right, so I'm just catching it with the pedal and instantly moving into position for, for the three notes of that measure. Same thing there. Uh, luckily it's an octave, so we should be able to reach like this. Same, con same process continues. Now, if you'll notice, it's a four note chord. At the beginning of this line, where you see the arrow pointing up, we start with the A sharp. And basically, it's if we squeeze all the notes together, it's A sharp, C sharp, E, G sharp. It's a particular kind of seventh chord, right? A half diminished seventh. And it has four notes. So it means it has four permutations of this chord, four inversions of this chord, and that's exactly what happens. We start on A sharp, we start on C sharp, we start on E, we start on F, not on G, so that G gets replaced with F sharp pretty quickly. So, in fact, it becomes a F sharp dominant seventh chord, but that doesn't matter. The point is, you have four uh, you have a seventh chord that you're playing with, you have four notes in the seventh chord, and you're starting uh, left hand harmony on four different notes before you run out of those notes, and then you restart the same process an octave higher. So here are the bottom notes, and then that A sharp, last measure of this page, hits. Might as well be that A sharp. The only thing that I'm making sure to do is I'm shifting my, you can see my nose there, I kind of shifting my torso to the right so as to give room to my left hand. Right, you can see I'm already starting to move. In fact, you know, I'm thinking again. I was just experimenting. Um, I think changing the pedal every half measure, as every uh, half measure you have this sort of harmony change, makes sense. And that's me going to the next page. I'm about to go there. 
it kind of feels stuck on that last measure like a broken record uh, of this page but whatever um, so yeah as before we've mapped it out we know what we're doing okay let's finish mapping a couple more things but the point I was trying to make is this measure right here the last measure is basically the repeat of the first measure of this line in the left hand okay so um, That's the idea. Um, once you feel like you can walk through it with hands alone, it really is time to, to do all the stuff I've been uh, demonstrating in the previous parts, which is take a section, work through it. I suggest backwards just because it kind of solidifies all these motions you have to do. And uh, really make sure you're stopping and checking that every time you're doing the right position change. For instance, at the end, right, that's an interesting position to be in. Um, F sharp, A, sh uh, A sharp, E in the left hand, right hand, G sharp, F sharp. But look, my second and first fingers in the right hand really have to be out of the way uh, so, as, so that the left hand can play its notes, so they kind of lift it up. But at least if I understand this position, I'm all set. So then what happens is you hold that. Okay, I'm going to use that yellow highlight thing again. Hopefully it's visible. So uh, with that yellow highlight, I'm holding the notes right after it. Just kind of position myself as best as I can. I'm aware that my thumb is not here. It's here. Uh, right hand is in, in place, not, not too hard. Once I'm ready, I just do this. I don't even have to do anything else. I just stop. Let's 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 do this. Uh, put a stop right here. Actually, I I remember now. I was going to use a different way of blocking um, my starts and stopping points, but I I didn't prep that for today. So sorry about that. Um, anyway, um, yeah. So so I'm starting from here, from the yellow, just holding this. And I'm just doing the, the, the next note and stop. Because the stop means I'm checking that position change. Right? You see that little rectangle on F sharp? That's it. Okay, so once that's clear, I step back, maybe start from here. Because now what happens is I'm holding the F sharp, you know, that third finger, holding the C sharp. I have the fifth finger ready, and now, but now in, in time, in, at, at the right speed, right, that's what I'm doing. So a very deliberate kind of shift of my thumb in the left hand, so I'm definitely on top of the E. All right, so continuing in the same vein, that should be very easy. I'm holding the G sharp in the left right hand. I'm holding the G sharp in the left hand. Second finger though, right? So if that's tricky to remember, just put it put it in. Good reminder. So holding these two notes and about to go on. And same thing. I've I've now added quite a quite a bit of adjustment in my left hand. I'm making sure every time I stop. Yep. I'm in the right position. Right, that blue line is my stopping point, and so on and so forth. Oh, I'm removing my second finger because of my stupidity in terms of how I'm using this program. So in here, I'm on E. stop and always making sure my left hand is doing what it's supposed to all right uh, let's go from here downbeat the thumb is spread out I mean the thumb is pointing as far as it can the long fingers the third is basically all the way inside the keyboard if you have a fall board right here you're almost touching it or in fact you are touching it right. and by this point I've I'm trying to negotiate three different uh, position adjustments in the left hand. 
if you are finding it hard, remember, all you have to do is say, okay, that's too much. Let me go ahead and uh, stop right here. Yeah. Just those two G sharps in both hands. Okay, fine. Stop in here. Before that, that's very easy. Then yellow highlight. Right, you're, you're just kind of uh, shortening the practice segment where uh, the amount of what your brain has to focus on and check is much less than before. Okay, so removing that yellow and so on and so forth. Um, you know, when I'm just kind of reading through it and not really uh, without having done all the practice steps, you can see I instantly lose my fingers and I kind of just fake it. I, I kind of... You know, play occasional wrong notes, but that's a different way of practicing and that's something I want to cover in, in other videos at some point, that in addition to this very deliberate approach, which makes sure that no stone is left unturned and that you have a very a clear, even albeit uh, methodic and maybe seemingly slow uh, approach to learning a piece. There is of course this other way where you're playing sloppily, you're maintaining the pulse and you just keep going, just keep going no matter what. I think that's both of those are important and have their place. However, what I'm focused on with this very methodic uh, position uh, exploration, uh, fingering, and this backwards practice, that to me is the only way if you want to eliminate any chance of something going wrong. Uh, you, you, you have to do that work. I think doing the other, the sloppy work helps from the other side. But as I said, I will, I will get to that in, an, in another video for right now, just to say that if you have practiced it and you're finally able to right, not do that kind of mistake, let's say, but truly spread out uh, the right hand in that second measure of the line uh, with that green highlight and everything is going smoothly then you've essentially conquered this passage. But I don't think it's going to come instantly and come easily. As I mentioned in the previous videos, I don't think it's helpful to just practice one hand and somehow magically expect that two hands will come together. There's a different brain process going on when both hands are playing and you're really trying to uh, coordinate both of them as opposed to just one of them. So that's why I would say as soon as you feel like you understand what each hand is supposed to do, put both of them down and actually start doing this kind of work. Now, just to discuss a little bit more the slow practice idea, because a lot of people do it. You're kind of procedurally walking through every note and making sure to do the right things. Oh, there is a position adjustment. Fine, I'll stop and check that. That's great too. In some way, it helps to clarify some questions. But when it comes time to actually learn to perform the piece, you're nowhere close to the speed at which you have to think. And that's why my short snippet idea, short and to, to precise to the point, actually gives you the taste of the real speed with which you want to play the piece. And so I think that um, while, like I said, there are many different ways to practice and try to get the results, the quicker way is to just take a small snippet and, and do the best you can at the speed at which you want to play the piece, as opposed to hope that the speed will come uh, increase gradually. It probably will. But my guess is you're not going to be building up the confidence you need right away by trying the full speed, but on a very short snippet. So that's something else to consider. Okay, that last half of a measure there, pretty easy, but... 
those two halves already introduce so many new position changes. So to the point, you don't have to add backwards just by a single note, like I've been showing. You can try to add a larger snippet. But in my experience, if I try to do this, I might get lucky or I might not. And then if you're not, then what do you do? What if it just all come, comes crashing down? Well, then you do have to go step by step, note by note, so you actually discover where that problem occurs, what, what is causing the issue. I mean, the left hand is just, it's, it's a hard, consistent uh, pattern. Nice thing it's consistent, but the pattern is forcing you to keep making these micro adjustments as you walk up the keyboard. And un until that becomes second nature, it's very, very hard to, um, to play this well. Uh, again, knowing what the chords are, the fact that it's A sharp, A sharp, C sharp, E, F sharp, A sharp, C sharp. I think that's a helpful way to practice, to see that long line with just single notes, right? Always making sure you're playing with that, um, how shall I put it? nine and a half o'clock finger right so it's almost nine o'clock but maybe not quite and so on and so on i think that's helpful to see general telephone posts as one of my teachers would say things that connect all the many notes together all right, so enough of that. Uh, let's look at that final page, which I think is basically this last measure here. Uh, re repeat it. Let's see. Let's see if that's the case. And I need to shift my view. Okay. Yeah, so it's basically the same. The only difference is that, come on. Hello. Okay, well, this is not working for some reason. My annotations are broken, so I'm going to quit out of here, enter the annotations again. Huh, for some reason I cannot annot annotate. Ah, I, re I remember why, that's why. Okay, here we go, sorry about this. So th that measure is the same as what we just saw on the previous page, but the rhythm in the right hand is slightly different. So, you know, that syncopation with the writ. Uh, now, you see a three there, I don't think it makes any sense, so we're going to play a four there, and a three here, just like we were doing in the previous measure. That, of course, puts us on five right here, and as you can see from here, um, it's the introduction material with the added melodic notes that you can see in those half notes pointing up. Uh, but I'll get in through that quickly next time. For right now, I just want to pause this video before it gets out of hand. So... So that may be the only thing that I would caution. It's very easy to place the fifth finger on the A sharp. It should really be on A. And then we need to get what to three, right? Because that's how the piece begins. So make sure to replicate all the same fingers um, if you keep going into th those following couple of measures. But um, yeah. It's so natural to just have the fifth finger rest on the wrong key. So doing that as a conscious effort is a good habit for learning to prepare positions more precisely. Right, and just stop right here for now uh, with a shift to, in fact, let's do that. No, uh, one more time with a shift into that specific position. So perhaps because that G, F, G, F, G starts on the previous measure, but you know that you need to prepare the five on A natural for what's coming up here. 
uh, in this return of the intro. And the first finger on C sharp. Right? Because we need to do that, um, let's actually put a reminder to do that back in the previous measure. Let's see if that works. Okay, come on in. Uh, da -da. Okay, there it is. So in this measure, right, the thumb comes over to C sharp right here. I'll even put a finger here. Right, so that, that C sharp, prepare it with um, finger one, in the, the thumb. And then as you go into, what am I doing? Sorry, I confused myself. Right, so thumb on C sharp, but the, fourth, uh, the third finger is already on F sharp. And then as you play the F sharp, that fifth finger put it on A right here yeah so little adjustments like that way ahead of time really help to build confidence in in the learning of pieces so do that all right so when you stop here right past that thin indigo line uh just check that all of the all of the things that you need to prepare are prepared fifth is on uh a and the, the the thumb in the right hand it's above C sharp but obviously it's above the left hand thumb otherwise they would be fighting for a little bit of space there so keep it above let the left hand thumb you know do whatever it needs to do underneath and then you are set all the way to the return of the intro. Okay, that's it. Uh, see you in the next part.